Hello and thanks for watching our Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video featuring Acumatica 2023 R1, you're going to find there's new predefined roles set up in Acumatica for sales order processing. So you can see them here. We have sales order admin, clerk, manager, and viewer. And we're going to go over the definition real quickly so that you get an idea. The user roles in Acumatica allow you to apply securities, individual securities, to a screen and all the fields in those screens, but to not have to do it per user. Instead, you assign your users to roles, and then you assign securities to the roles. So in the past, in Acumatica, you've had to do this manually, and you still should take a look at your user securities, specifically for your environment, for your company, for your all your employees, and for how you do business. Because these predefined roles may not be perfect for everything you're trying to do. But they'll definitely get you started, and they'll eliminate a lot of the grunt work of setting these up from scratch. So if we take a look, this is coming from the manual in Acumatica's 2023 R1. The sales order admin, the general description here is, it's somebody who performs order functionality and sets things up. They have full access to all order functionality and order fulfillment. They have the ability to get to these accounts receivable forms, such as setting up sales prices, worksheets, and discounts. They have full access to inventory and any settings that are applicable to sales orders. They can read purchase orders so they could see any kind of information related to sales orders with purchase order links. And all of that stops short of being able to get into any warehouse operations. So the next is the sales order manager. And the only difference really here is that there's only read only access to the forms with sales order settings. So for example, order types and sales order preferences, those screens, the sales order manager can look at them, but can't make changes. Moving ahead, an SO clerk can do sales order functionality, such as data reporting. There's no access to see any of the order preference screens, read only access for sales prices, worksheets, and discounts, and nothing in the way of inventory or purchase order type screens. Sales order viewer has read only access to forms related to any kind of sales order fulfillment and no access to forms with sales order settings, financial forms, or automated warehouse options, which is similar. Financial forms and of course the automated WMS. And then moving ahead on the purchasing front, the PO admin is very similar to the SO admin do all those kinds of things that we talked about on the sales order admin side. We'll move ahead and cycle back up so we can see these. And a PO manager can get to all the fulfillment and replenishment forms, can look at the purchase order settings, has full access to change any kind of pricing, limited access to inventory, and no access to WMS stuff. Purchase order buyer can get into purchase orders, can see landed cost codes and FOB points, delivery methods. They have full access to get into any kind of vendor pricing, limited access to inventory and no access to WMS. You can see here PO clerk has very limited access to purchase orders and not much else throughout the system, can look at vendor pricing to see how things are structured. A purchase order viewer is read only. And then if we go down to IN admin, you're starting to see the pattern here. An IN admin can get to all the preferences and do all the transactions, whereas a manager can look at the preferences but also do a lot of transactions in the system. A receiver has the ability to receive purchases, accept inbound transfers. If you do two-step transfers, that particular role will be able to handle those and put away goods on a two-step process. 
an IN shipper can pick, pack, and ship customer sales orders, handle outbound transfers for automated replenishment between warehouses, handle vendor returns, and confirm shipments. So when a shipment is ready to go and you're ready to get your shipping label and packing slip together, that's a confirmed shipment. That gives them full rights to the pick, pack, and ship automated screens as well. An IN clerk can do cycle counts and inventory adjustments. And an inventory viewer can read only, essentially, all the forms related to inventory, nothing outside the periphery of that. And there's no access to any of the settings and preferences. Lastly, Acumatica added data manager people, data manager roles. So if we take a look at that, a customer data manager is responsible for entering master data related to customer profiles. Pretty straightforward. They have full access to all of the customer's profile, customer classes. They have read-only access to AR preferences so they could see it. No access to processing forms or with general settings, reports, or inquiries. Vendor data manager, the same thing, only on the vendor side. And an inventory data manager can complete any kind of stock and non-stock item profiles. They have full access to those forms, but no access to the settings, reports, or inquiries under inventory. And as usual, if we go into access rights, you can perform access rights three different ways. One of them is by role, one of them is by user, the other one's by screen. The role and the screen are somewhat similar. The user kind of stands out on its own. Access rights by role allows you to select a role and then go through the different screens in Acumatica and decide what rights you get for those different screen elements. So you can come in here and decide revoked, view only, edit, insert, delete. And again, this is all under this particular role. Access rights by screen does not have a role or any kind of selector at the top. Instead, you navigate by screens. So for example, if I wanted to go to inventory and look at my stock item profile, I would then in this panel see all of my roles and decide who gets what right. So for example, if I look at the inventory roles, the new ones, the new predefined ones, I can see that an IN manager can view only, but an IN admin has delete abilities, the ability to do anything up to delete. And then lastly, access by user, it's not something you don't define the user specifically, meaning you don't pick a user and say, this is the rights I'm gonna give them. But instead, you select the user and it allows you to see the net effect of their rights. So it's a good way to test that particular user and see what rights they have. But you can't go in and actually make a change here. This is just for viewing purposes. Now, if you double click on something or click view roles, you can see, well, how did this particular user get this delete right? And Acumatica goes through, it looks at all of the different roles, so you can troubleshoot and see, well, how is this user getting the delete right? Well, it looks like from CA clerk, because everywhere else it's revoked. A couple of more tips. If you go into any particular screen, let's say it's journal transactions, maybe you're having difficulty finding out where is that right coming from? Where do I find that right to make changes to it? So if I open up a journal transaction, I could do this a couple of different ways. If I go to tools, I can go down to access rights and Acumatica will open up the access rights by screen. It'll highlight the section that I'm on right now. And then I can go out and define which roles should get that right. So I can go to the screen and do it that way. The other thing to note, as you're looking at these different sections, see all of these sections are collapsed right now. And you can see all of them here. 
if I go in and I open up our sitemap, the design of this is just that. If you're looking for something in banking, if you go to the sitemap and you look for banking, these are all the menu items you should see under access rights by screen. So if we expand this, we can see all of these different options here. And if we go back to the site map, they're all essentially here. Now, again, you may want to go to these screens individually and click the tools button and do that access rights. But nonetheless, you'll find that's the structure behind these access rights. One last tip, if you go to users, maybe you have a user that's saying, I can't get into this, I can't do that. I just can't, I can't, I can't. What you can do is you can go in to log in, look them up, select the user, and actually log in as the user. If you're an admin, of course. And what that does is it gives you the ability to see what can they see and what can they get to. Now keep in mind, if we log back in, and we go into Access History. You'll notice Access History in Acumatica shows what are your users doing in the system. And there's different takes here on this. One of them is login. If you go to Access Screen, you can actually see what screens they're in. But the takeaway here is that even though I logged in as Bloom, the system shows that, it registers that as, as Bloom. So this way an admin can't just go in and uh, start doing work as Bloom and then sign back out. This is particularly useful for companies that have multiple admins and you want to try and keep heads or tails of it. You'll still see who the user is uh, logging in uh, under that user. But it's definitely helpful to see whether Bloom, you know, maybe just isn't doing things right, maybe needs a little training, or whether they truly need a security fixed for their user. So that's it, that's predefined roles. And we threw in a little bit about access history and how to set up access rights and how to troubleshoot. If you have any questions about this or anything else Acumatica, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching and subscribing to our YouTube channel and have a